Hey everyone, welcome or welcome back to my channel. My name is Emily and today we are going through some recent reads. So I haven't done a wrap up yet in 2020, so I figured I'd do like a first quarter wrap up um, and pretend that like that's what I was planning to do all along and not that I've just been lazy. I have read so far 17 books this year and I wanted to talk about them. Uh, this is the first time in like several weeks that I've actually done my hair, put on makeup, put on real clothes and so I was just feeling inspired. I tried to film this video last week and it was like over an hour of raw footage and I just I I need I need to be more concise for the sake of my editing self. So I'm gonna go through the books that I read uh, starting with January going through March in chronological order. That's the easiest for me anyway, um, way to do wrap ups. So that's what we're gonna do. So in January, I actually did make a TBR and I stuck mostly with it sort of, if I remember. The first book that I finished was one that I really wanted to get to and that was City of Girls by Elizabeth Gilbert. This is a sort of coming of age story of our main character, Vivian, who recently was kicked out of college and um, the year is 1940. Her parents are super disappointed and they sent her to go live with her sort of estranged aunt in uh, New York City. Her aunt owns a theater and so she gets swept up into this world of theater and showgirls and she discovers her sexuality and her independence and I loved every minute of it. And this is told sort of like um, Evelyn Hugo, so if you liked that book I think you'll like this one. We get at the start, um, an introduction from Vivian when she is older, um, writing a letter to this woman, and Vivian's going to tell her, tell this woman how she knows her dad. That's really all we know, um, and this book is literally like her writing this letter to this woman. I think her name is Amelia, and I don't know. I loved it a whole lot. I just loved the kind of unapologetic tone of it. I guess um, I don't know. It worked really, really well for me. I love that format of storytelling. Um, I gave this five stars and I immediately then went out and was like, all right, I need to read all of Elizabeth Gilbert's books. She is the author of Eat, Pray, Love. I don't plan on reading that, but she has some other fiction that I'm interested in reading. I used this for the Pop Sugar Challenge prompt to read a book featuring one of the seven deadly sins, um, all of them. Next, I listened to the audiobook of Lock Every Door by Riley Sager. This is a thriller, mystery thriller, that came out last year and got a ton of hype. I, for the most part, really liked it. This is set in also New York City. I read a lot of books set in New York City so far this year. A young woman has just lost her job and her boyfriend and thus her apartment, like all in one day. And in what she believes is a stroke of luck, she finds a like house sitting job um, at this fancy, building called the Bartholomew that she has loved and adored like her whole life and so she gets this job that's going to pay her super well um she gets to live in this beautiful like apartment but there are a few rules um, she can't spend a night away from the apartment she can't have any guests and she cannot interact with the other residents of the building from there she starts to learn and realize that this building has some history has some ghosts um, not like literal ghosts. It just has a past and so she starts getting kind of creeped out and not really sure what the heck is going on. Um, and for the most part, like I said, I really liked this. I thought the setting was amazing. Um, but in the end, the, the like twist reveal at the end just didn't quite work for me. Um, there were, and there were like one too many plot twists I felt like. I ended up giving this three and a half stars. Like I said, it was fine, um, but it just wasn't my favorite thriller thriller I've ever read. And I counted this for the pop sugar prompt of reading a book with a pink cover. Next, I buddy read The Romance Book Club by Lisa K. Adams with my friend Jocelyn from Yogi with the Book. In my um, TBR, I had talked about how we were going to buddy read um, a book called Roses and Rot. We got maybe halfway into it and it was just like, not working for either of us so we completely switched gears and read a contemporary romance and I think we both really really enjoyed it a lot more than we expected to. It is about a pro baseball player Gavin whose wife tells him he want, she wants a divorce and he uh, is kind of taken aback and is like swept into this book club with his teammates um, where they read romance novels as a way to like be better partners. And it's just ridiculous and hilarious. And we do get alternating chapters from Gavin and his wife Thea 
Um, and then we also get a couple um, instances throughout the book um, where we're actually reading the romance novel the book club is reading. It's a historical romance. And I loved that part of it. I thought it was a really interesting addition. And I thought um, Lisa K. Adams did a really good job with it. In the end, I gave it four and a half stars. It wasn't like my perfect contemporary romance, but I really, really loved it. Um, and it was super fun to read it with Jocelyn. It was something that I think is kind of out of our buddy reading norm, so it was fun to switch it up a little bit. I read this for the pop sugar prompt of reading a book about a book club. Next, I was really lucky to receive an arc from NetGalley of The Gravity of Us by Phil Stamper. Uh, this is a story of our main character, Cal, who grew up in New York City. <laughs> he has um, some internet fame um, from this app called Flash Fame. Basically, he does these live streams of like what's happening in Brooklyn this week. He wants to be a journalist and um, you know he has this dream internship coming up at BuzzFeed. Suddenly, his life is upended. His dad is accepted as an astronaut into this um, NASA program that is going to send people to Mars. And that means that Cal and his family have to move to Texas. Um, all of the astronauts' families live in this community and they're part of a reality show that kind of follows the program and more so the families and the astronauts. Cal is also super upset because he believes that this means he won't be able to have his like social media following, he can't do his internship. Everything is just kind of like I don't know, shit's hitting the fan uh, for him personally. He ends up meeting Leon, who is the son of another one of the astronauts, um, and they spark a little romance. I enjoyed it for the most part. I didn't love Cal as a character. He kind of got on my nerves. He didn't always listen to what people were telling them they needed, and that is just a challenging trait in any person or character. I also thought the like tension and the conflict um, with the like reality show and his social media fame. It didn't quite work for me. Um, it seemed a little lackluster. I also, in my arc, I got an e-arc of it. Um, there were occasional chapters that seemed like transcripts of the reality show, but they were weirdly formatted. And I think it was a problem with the arc itself because I've looked at a physical copy and it's like full transcripts, no issues, um, but I couldn't, always figure out what was being said or what was being shared and so that really took me out of it. In the end I ended up giving this three stars and I read this for the prompt of reading a book that uh, is about or involves social media. Next up, I listened to the audiobook of The Silent Patient by Alex Michaelides. This is, again, a really hyped mystery thriller. Um, I believe it won the Goodreads Choice Award um, for mystery thriller last year. It's about a psychologist who is obsessed with this particular case of a woman who killed her husband, stabbed him multiple times, and then never spoke again. And she has spent the last six or seven years in a psychiatric facility and he applies for a job opening there, gets it, and gets to like interact with this woman. I don't think it quite lived up to the hype for me. I don't quite know why. Um, I liked the twist. I did see it coming. I thought it was, it became fairly obvious to me as I was reading. One thing I like, again, is that it has kind of a dual um, timeline of the psychologist present day with the woman whose name I can't remember and then flashbacks to her before all of this happened. Again, I like that structure so I enjoyed that but um, I don't know, it it was fine. I enjoyed it for the most part but it wasn't anything that stood out to me. I don't remember a lot more about it um, so I ended up giving it I think three and a half stars and I read this for the challenge of reading a mystery or a medical thriller. And then finally I ended January by reading The Girl Who Circumnavigated Fairyland in a Ship of Her Own Making by Catherine M. Valente. I really wanted to love this and for a lot of it I did. This story is about a girl named September who is whisked off to fairyland uh, by a green wind and meets a wyvern, the friends a wyvern, meets this boy named Saturday. It's like it's very whimsical and fantastical it's middle grade, and it was just a little bit too much of that for my personal reading tastes as an adult. I think as a middle grade reader, I would have enjoyed this more. That being said, I would definitely read more of Catherine Valente's adult uh, works. I think she's a really creative writer, and it was 
ultimately a fun reading experience. It's a solid middle grade. If you enjoy middle grade, I would definitely recommend picking this up if you haven't already. I think it's like a five book series too. I ended up giving this three stars. I picked this up for the prompt of reading a book because the title caught your attention, I think. Um, and obviously, I mean, it's a fantastic title. <laughs> Going into February, the first book that I read was The Gracier by Kim Leggett. This is kind of compared to The Hunger Games, uh, Handmaid's Tale, a little bit of Lord of the Flies. This is a story about a society or community where all 16 year old girls are sent off for this thing called the Grace Year, where they are meant to go off and discover their like inherent magic that they have as women and like get rid of it. It is a very unique and creative world. I was so sucked in. I like could not stop listening. I was obsessed with it. It is really good YA dystopian fiction. If you like that that genre, I definitely recommend picking this up. The like twist at the end shocked me, but I also like wasn't sure how to feel about it if I liked it or if I didn't. I really I really didn't know. Um but again, it took me by surprise completely. I really, really liked it. I gave it four stars. I was using this for the prompt to read a book that passes the Bechdel test. I recommend going in knowing as little as possible just because I think it's all the more shocking because of that. But again, I um, definitely recommend if you enjoy YA dystopian or if you have in the past, like I haven't really read a lot of that genre recently, but it really, it was, exactly what I wanted it to be. Next up, another thriller that I listened to on audio, um, which honestly is probably my favorite way to read thrillers. I listened to The One by John Mars. This was recommended to Kayla from Books and Lala in like a video where her subscribers recommended books to her and she really liked it and so I picked it up. <laughs> I really, really enjoyed it, especially the audio production. This is a story set in the near future where someone has discovered a like gene marker that identifies your like soulmate essentially. So there is a company that, I don't know, you send in your like swab sample to them, they find your match and notify you when they find them. And then it's supposed to be like, you know, the perfect relationship soulmates, whatever. We follow, I think, six different people who have recently gotten their match, and there are different audio or voice actors for each perspective, which I love. I love a full cast production, and the sh chapters are really short, and they kind of like leave you hanging, and they move through them pretty quickly, which I really, really liked. I like short chapters in general. It worked really well here. It's a little bit romance. It's a little bit mystery, sci-fi, some thriller element. Like, it's a lot of things all in one, and I enjoyed the heck out of it. I ended up giving it five stars. It's not like a perfect or my favorite thriller ever, but it was fantastic. I used this for the Pop Sugar prompt of reading a book by or about a journalist. I believe John Mars by prof profession is a journalist. Next up, I read and adored the fifth season by N.K. Jemisin and then immediately picked up The Obelisk Gate the sequel, um, obviously also by N.K. Jemisin, and I fell hard for these books. I, oh my gosh, from like the first, literally the first line of the fifth season, I was like, yes, I am going to love it. This is exactly what I want. It stayed that way through both of these books. Um, I have not finished the third one yet. I found that I was just getting like too deep into this world and it was becoming a, pro a bit of a problem. I like was literally using like jargon from the books like in my inner thoughts. Like they use the word rusting instead of like basically in place of like other curse words and I would think to myself like this rusting book like they, it was just too much. It was too much and I had to like pause. But these books are impossible to, to describe. I like don't know how to like summarize. What the story is, it is fantasy, sci-fi, about a world where some people are origins um, and basically have like the ability to control the earth, like er not the earth but can control elements of earth. I, it's really hard to describe. I've never watched Avatar The Last Airbender and you can drag me for that if you want, uh, whatever, but it's kind of what I imagine earthbenders to be. I don't know if that's correct or not, but I just, I loved these. The first one follows three different perspectives. I was immediately like, okay, these must be connected somehow. 
but we don't know how yet. Um, and you slowly figure that out through the, throughout the book and it's so good. Like I said, I finished this one and then immediately went out and bought the second book because like I needed to read it immediately. I've seen some reviews that say this one like suffers from like middle book syndrome. I don't think it did at all. I thought this was just as good. I do think I liked this one more mostly because like we figured out the three perspectives and like that sort of mystery is kind of gone from this one, but it's still fantastic. All three of these books um, can be used interchangeably for the three prompts that I'm using them for with Pop Sugar. Well, they're all written by a woman of color. So that's one of the prompts. They each have um, a map. I believe it's the same map in all three. And then all of them have fantastic first lines. Uh, and one of the prompts is read a book with a great first line. The first line of the first book is, let's start with the end of the world, why don't we? get it over with and move on to more interesting things, which is great. And then book two, this is not a spoiler. Hmm, no, I'm telling this wrong, uh, which is also great. And just like, what? Um, I can't remember off the top of my head what Stone Sky is, but, and it's downstairs, but um, I remember I picked it up and I said to Adam, I was like, oh my God, how is it that all three of them have perfect first lines that just like immediately hook you? Um, or at least for me. I adore this series. It is quickly becoming one of my favorite series of all time. Um, this is definitely my favorite book that I've read so far this year, hands down. I'm now a true like Broken Earth fangirl and I have to immediately, I, I just, I need to read more from N.K. Jemisin, like right now. Next up, I read Graceling by Kristen Kishore, um, which is a like classic YA fantasy. Um, I'm sure you've heard of it. You've probably read it. I am super late to the game on this one. I picked this up because I picked out prompts to read for the Pop Sugar Challenge um, out of that little like essentially TBR jar sort of deal. And uh, one of the prompts was uh, read a book that features a character who has vision impairment and I wanted a book with that rep in it. Graceling was on a list somewhere but it like it's it does technically have that rep but it's not until like the very end and it's like not great rep but I don't know. So in this world um, certain people are have a grace which is basically a superpower or like magical ability and they are marked by having like two color um eyes of two different color two different color eyes <laughs> but our main character is graced with the power of killing basically she is able to it's not like she can like look at someone and they die but she always wins in a fight can like find like the best way to kill someone sort of thing it's it's a little gruesome um but she is the niece of the king of one of the like kingdoms within this world and he basically uses her as his like assassin and his like strong arm which she's not super about because he's not a great guy it's, it's her story she's trying to help a princess flee an abusive situation she's aided by another prince um there's a lot of royalty in this book and i thought it was fine it was like pretty standard YA fantasy for its era. It was written like 08, I want to say. I liked it more than I expected to, I think. Um, and I'd probably read the sequels, but nothing like super stands out to me. It's nothing special. It's got a lot of criticism for, I think like fair criticism for trying to be this feminist story. Uh, but Katza, the main character, is like, you know, she hates dresses. She cuts all her hair off. She's tough. And like... There's valid criticism that like women can be tough and they can they can be strong without object rejecting every like feminine trait. Definitely a fair and valid criticism. It was it was fine. Um, I gave it three and a half stars and I already told you what prompt I used it for, but I feel a little weird about using it for that prompt. So we'll see if that sticks. <laughs> Next, I listened to Supernova by Marissa Meyer, which is the third and final story in the Renegades trilogy, which is a series about superheroes and villains and um, the difference and similarities between the two. I'm not going to talk about the third synopsis because it's the third and final book um, but I will say I really loved it um, it was my favorite of the three I think I gave it four stars and I just the epilogue I had a feeling it also definitely leaves open the possibility of more books in this world which I would be super down to read I read this for the prompt read a book with a pun in the title 
Uh, so our main character is Nova. She has super powers, supernova. There's also like actually like something related to like supernova in the book, but it's still kind of a pun, so we're going with it. Next up, I read an arc of When You Were Everything by Ashley Woodfolk. This is a story really about a breakup of friends. We get two timelines. <laughs> Again, this is another thing I love. It's also set in New York City as well. Our main character, Cleo, she and her best friend of several years, uh, Layla, recently like had a breakup essentially. And so we get some chapter, alternating chapters from present day since they've broken up. Um, and then kind of like the start of the school year leading up to their the like breakup of their breakup of their friendship They're sophomores in high school And I think Ashley Woodfolk does a really really good job capturing like the drama and the highs and the lows of high school um, I thought that was one of the best parts of the book. I also really enjoyed That it was a lot about I mean you get so many stories about romantic breakups but rarely do you see like platonic French friend breakups which are also like really de devastating um, and can have a really big impact on you so I thought that was like a great thing to see represented because it's very real um, and something that doesn't really get talked about a lot there is a reason for the like breakup of Cleo and Layla and to be honest, like neither of them were being good friends to the other uh, but Cleo did something pretty shitty and I don't, my biggest problem with this book was that I, it didn't feel like she felt like a remorse over it. Like she felt, she knew it was wrong, but it didn't seem like she really felt like it was a bad thing and she didn't seem super sorry. At least that was my reading of it. While I did like a lot of this book, I, that just made me feel kind of gross. So I ended up giving it four stars um, because overall I think it was, a really important topic and I think it was really well done but um, yeah there were definitely some things that made me feel a little not great and I read this for the challenge of reading a book with more than 20 letters in its title next I listened to the audiobook of know my name by Chanel Miller she is um, more commonly known as Emily Doe in the Brock Turner um, assault and rape case from Stanford which happened um, several years ago so I'm gonna be talking about that a little bit, trigger warning. Um, I will like put a timestamp here where I stop talking about it if you prefer not to listen to this topic. This book is incredible. I mean, Chanel Miller is a phenomenal human. She's a really strong person um, and she's a really good writer. She also reads the audiobook, which is really, really powerful, especially at the end as she's reading some of the stuff from the actual case. Um, it's very, very powerful. I think this is a really important book. Um, I think what happened in that case is horrific um, on so many levels, but it really does detail not only what happened to her in that moment on that night, but also what happened after and her the emo emotional strain, physical strain, mental strain, everything, um, how her entire life was affected by this one night um, and this one person. It's really, really well done. I, it's definitely five star worthy. It's so well written, really well performed, and just really important. So if you feel comfortable reading that subject matter, highly recommend. Um, again, the audiobook is really, really well done. I read this for the uh, pop sugar prompt of reading a book by an author in their 20s. Next up I read Bringing Down the Duke by Evie Dunmore. Um, I don't really want to talk much about this because I didn't really like it, but this is a historical romance set in uh, 1879 to 1880 and it's about a woman who's just sort of like a commoner who falls in love with the Duke and there's a lot of like, oh my god, we can't be together because they're like social class, blah blah blah. I don't know, there's just a it's, I don't know. This is not super long, but it felt really long. Um, it just felt like the story was really drawn out. It felt like I was trying to be this like great feminist like s romance story, and I didn't feel like it really hit those notes for me. Obviously, they end up together. Like I know that's technically a spoiler, but if you don't see that coming, like you've never read a romance before, they do end up together, and like the final culmination of like, oh my gosh, we can like we can be. This is why it was just like really. I rolled my eyes a lot. So like I said, I don't really want to talk about this because it was 
it was fine. I think I like contemporary fan, um, romance much more than I like historical romance. I gave it two stars. Um, I used this for the um, prompt of reading a book about a character in their 20s. Next up, I read Lethal White by Robert Galbraith, aka JK Rowling. This book is huge. <laughs> it was almost 700 pages, 650 pages. And I actually really loved it. It's not my favorite of the series, I don't think, because it is, it's longer than it needs to be. Let's be real. But I thought the mystery in this one was really good. I think JK Rowling as a person, not great, but she does a really good job of writing mysteries that really keep you guessing and at the end are surprising but very plausible and not like feel completely out of left field. I really really like this series. I'm going to talk a little bit in spoilers. Um, this is the fourth book so I'll again put a timestamp if you don't want to hear any spoilers. I hate the romance between or like the weird sexual tension between Strike and Robin. I don't buy it. I think that the book or the series could be completely fine without it. I like Robin, okay? She and her husband, Matthew, um, they are just not good people to each other. Like, they're both, like, she's shitty to him, he's shitty to her. So, like, it just really drove me crazy. I did not, I, I'm happy that the end of that relationship has happened. Hopefully, theoretically, who knows. But I just don't want a romance between Strike and Robin. I really, really don't. I don't get it. I, I just don't. So that's my one gripe with this. So I gave it four and a half stars because of that. But otherwise, really good. Really hooked me in. And I really enjoy this series a lot. The next book comes out the day before my birthday. So super stoked about that. Editing Emily here to tell you that I read Lethal White to complete the pop sugar prompt of reading a book set in a city that has previously hosted the Olympics and this book is set in London during the 2012 Olympics so it's like very perfect for this prompt. Just had to let you know. <laughs> the last book I read in March was Don't Date Rosa Santos by Nina Moreno. This is a YA contemporary story um, about Rosa Santos, who lives in Port Coral, Florida. Um, she lives in a very tight-knit community that is trying to raise enough money to save its marina from being purchased by developers. And that's sort of the catalyst of the story. Rosa's mom and grandmother both were in love with men who, like, basically drowned at sea. <laughs> so there's this, like, curse on the Santos women that they shouldn't you know, be involved with sailors, men who work um, in the water, that sort of thing. There's just this like superstition about the Santos women and water. That's part of it as well. It is sort of magical realism, fabulism. Um, there are elements of that in here. Um, there's also a romance and yeah, for the most part, I enjoyed this. Um, I should say I read this in the middle of being quarantined in my house. This takes place in beautiful sunny Florida and it's a little depressing to read about that when you can't leave your home um, in gloomy early springtime Maine. It was like a little challenging but also I didn't, um, I don't know, it just didn't totally work for me. There are a lot of side characters and I got very confused by all of them. There are enough that like you just get like little bits about them. They don't get enough character development to have been like distinct in my mind so I just had a really hard time keeping all of them straight. I will say Rosa, her mom, and her grandmother are also are all three very strong characters and I really really enjoyed all of them. I also really loved all of the baking and the cooking, um, the descriptions of that. It was amazing. I didn't totally buy the romance. It felt a little sudden and I didn't really understand why what was what was attractive about this guy he just kind of seemed bland to me but it was cute i wish i had read this in the middle of summer when i could like be outside in the sun um i also wish there's a little bit more about this like festival that they're putting on all in all it was good i felt a little disappointed by it um, especially because some of my friends like love this book like it's one of their favorites of all time i do want to say the cuban american rep in this is amazing just the latinx representation in general i don't want to diminish that at all um it's super super important as a whole it just didn't quite work for me the way it did for others um so i ended up giving it three stars and i used this as a book recommended by one of your favorite 
blogs, vlogs, online book clubs, whatever. Um, my friend Jocelyn from Yogi with a Book, uh, this is like one of her favorite books of all time. So I had to read it for her. All right, that is everything that I read from January to March. Hopefully I did a good job summing it up, <laughs> more or less. I hope it's not over an hour of raw footage this time. If you've read any of these books and want to chat about them, please leave me a comment down below. Um, also, leave me recommendations of what you're reading and watching and doing during this time of social isolation, because I could definitely use some recommendations. If you want to connect with me elsewhere, uh, my links to my social media accounts are all in the description bar below. If you enjoyed this video, be sure to give it a thumbs up and subscribe so you don't miss out on my next video. But until then, happy reading. Bye. Also stay home.